Now a few months ago I made a promise to the audience it was more Cold Steel videos. And I just would like to tell you I'm here to fulfill that promise even if it's a stupid internet promise. Now on my videos where I feature any Cold Steels and sometimes just out of the blue I'll get suggestions about Cold Steels. I own exactly 19 or thereabouts of them and over the years I have reviewed some loaners. I buy them when I find a good deal, or someone gives them to me, or loans them to me, occasionally loans them to me. And while I may not have your cold steel or have the money to buy it right now, or want to borrow it, I think it's pretty cool, man, so thanks for sharing, dude. <laughs> so let's take a look at the ones I have, you know, that have come across my desk and I've reviewed, or that I currently own, which I would assume is something posted quite frequently by grown-ass men here. And to be honest, the only way you're going to get validation on your badass cold steel collection is a stranger on the internet. All right, let's dig into the 10,000th version of Hey there guys, check out my Cold Steel collection on YouTube. First up, the Espada XL. This is literally the Cold Steel, other than Lynn. If you melted down a man wearing a western suit, a bolo tie, and a 75 El Dorado, his pockets containing little blue pills, some loose change, a money clip full of ones with a hundred wrapped on the outside, and a cheap but huge Italian stiletto in his pocket, and you just ground them up and melted them down and forged it into a big fucking knife, this would be it. Now it's what I like to call a thinking man's knife, because it's currently lodged in the chest of someone who got to thinking too much. Yeah man, that's what you get for thinking. I'm not gonna lie, I marvel that this knife even exists. It's excess, it's size, it's beautiful grace as you sling it out of your pocket. My guess is its primary use would be a weapon, but the kind you'd have pulled out of your waistband as you lay face down on the concrete shirtless yelling, Hey man, I'm fucking innocent, you got the wrong guy! Now it weighs a pound with the shimmering S35VN blade, and I did a video on it, so, you know, please go watch it. Now it's hard to compare anything else to this magnificent piece of cutlery. Don't ask why, just understand that it is. If you think it seems awkward for self-defense, then you just don't understand who it was made for. Oh, and here's a boring anecdote. Cold Steel asked if they could share that slow-mo batoning video I put up on Instagram, um, I don't know, like a month ago. Of course, I'm a whore for more followers, so I said yes. That was up for two minutes, and they took it down. I don't know, did it violate the warranty? Did it seem dangerous? I hope so. And you know what? The safety squints are as good as glasses. Now that we have the most important Cold Steel out of the way, let's go in order of the ones I like the most or find useful, and then end on the ones I like least, and then talk about the ones I know of that you're going to suggest. Okay, number two. How about the Broken Skull? If I were to need a nice useful pocket knife, one that's got a pretty decent factory edge and say it's easy to maintain on a stupid person's sharpening system like the Spyderco Sharp Maker, this is it. It's got a big blade, be good for food prep or general utility. It comes in a nice wearing S35VN. It's thin and light in the pocket and it has a strong lock. These run about 70 bucks and in my opinion for a weight to blade length ratio to the pocketability aspect, this is the best cold steel everyday carry style knife I own. While it may have a wrestler's name on it and be called the Broken Skull, it's quite reasonable and tasteful. I have a full review on YouTube already of this knife, so go check it out, because it's a stunner. <laughs> uh, the pocket clip is tough, but is there such thing as a perfect knife? Now three. Three is the cold steel code four. I could have made it four, but I thought it would drive a few weirdos crazy. The handle was a bit slick, but I have been described as a little too slick too. Or sorry, too slick also. I mean, like, not how the old guys say cool, but the greasy kind of slick. I guess the old guys say cool now too, huh? It was pretty good, but I had to give it back. Very tasteful, has a strong lock, and moderate-sized everyday carry. No triangle texture to rip the shit out of your pockets. Now, I never rebought one because, you know, back locks are not my favorite locks, and I have other cold steels with them. If this is your favorite thing, man, you know what? That's amazing. That's a good choice. See my video for my thoughts on this one. Number four, how about a sleeper? Or, sorry, my mind is still in wrestling mode. Something that looks outrageous, but is still very functional. The Colossus. Designed by Mike Wallace, who also made my favorite non-Kukri big-ass fixed blade, the XXL Spear. Now, I have a knife film on both of these on YouTube, by the way, but here's why I like this one. It keeps within Cold Steel's ridiculous design aesthetic, but it's still well-made and has a slicey blade. It's tall, it's sharp, and it's easy to sharpen. And while it's great at meat, I'm sure, boy, can it slice through a tomato. Okay, or a meat boot. You know, I just had an amazing thought. What if there were a meat rope? Oh, I can see it down in the comments now. I got a meat rope for you. Number five, the AD15, which is about 150 bucks. I believe the Colossus from uh, the prior uh, number is no longer available. Cold Steel's nearly identical version of the classic Demco Knives custom and mid-tech design. 
Now it's a little boring compared to the cool colorways of the Demco, but it's still a faithful reproduction in size and function. And if you don't have Demco money, and to be honest I rarely do, you can go with this and get basically the same knife that doesn't look quite as sick as the original in your social media feed. I take this one camping a lot, it's a good size, it feels sure in the hand and it's easy to clean, and I love the lock. It feels a little dangerous. I recently got some Micarta skills for it from Slashy Tones over on Instagram to get rid of the, you know, pocket killing G10 and give it a little more of a Demco feel. So this is what it looks like now. I think it improves it. Number six is the Special Forces Shovel. Or sorry, Special Forces Shovel. It has a sharpened edge, so it counts as a knife. It's a great cheap compact one. It's good for car camping and gardening. You can chop, you can dig. It works almost as well as a full length shovel, but it gives the added benefit of back problems. You can chop, you can dig, you can even throw it. The handle's cheap and replaceable, and the steel on the shovel is pretty durable. 10 out of 10 would buy again. I just put a shovel film out about this, so go check it. Number seven, the SRK. Uh, I think it's like survival rescue knife, I don't remember. Someone correct me, please. If you need a cheap-ass well-made fixed blade for your shirtless yelling at the kids' camping adventures at the KOA, I got your knife, dude. You wear it on the belt, and ain't no one asking you to borrow salt but you're sure as hell gonna ask to borrow a Coors, am I right? At about 30 bucks, it's hard to find a mid-sized fixed blade that is as good as a general purpose outdoor knife as this one. Baton it through logs if you choose, and it'll do just fine. Cut rope, cut twine, make booby traps. Just be on your no trespassing signs. Yep, you can put those up at the campground so it feels just like Missouri. Sorry, the part of Missouri where you live. Not the part an hour away where you're camping. The sheath it comes with has flexible mounting options and is pretty durable. That rubberized handle is great in the hand or in gloves, and the carbon steel blade is easy to sharpen. And just remember, these are my rankings, and a lot of the mid-grade ones aren't bad. You know, it just doesn't meet my needs as some of the higher ranking ones. You may rank them differently. Now, number eight's the Tough Light. If it's your favorite cold steel, you know what, dude? That's pretty cool. For me, if I'm carrying a small knife, it's usually a traditional. This is a great little capable, cheap, strong EDC knife. I sent just used all of my adjectives that I use for knife reviews, so sorry. I heard there's a smaller version of this that sucks, and it's called the Tough Light Mini. At least, uh, I remember one person on the internet telling me it was terrible, so let's treat that as a fact. I don't know why a knife with a 2.5-inch blade needs a mini version. Like, I can't even believe Cold Steel thought it was a good idea. 2 inches versus 2. Hey, Lane, are you sure uh, we should make a knife this small? What if someone calls us a bunch of cucks? But this one's top notch. Most people who are cold steel aware may not know that they made knives like this size. So you're welcome, hypothetical guy who doesn't like cold steel much but watches my 15 to 20 minute video about him. Not a single wrestler endorsement written anywhere on the blade, and it's kind of a shame. I have not done a review of this one either. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Nine, the Natchez Bowie. The cold steel Bowie that has my heart as the trail master. Now I ain't never held one of those, but if I did, my heart would have flutter and it does sometimes anyway because of an undiagnosed heart condition. I just know it would be right for me, and this one is close, but with the cable tang, it still held up to a lot of whacking that I put it through in the video. It was a loner, so I had to give it back, because uh, what if I awoke the drama content YouTubers who only tell you the truth? Advanced Knife Bro kept my knife. Here's why God will forgive you for sending him death threats. It's a good racket. 10, how about the Wild West buoy? This one's all mine. You know, I found that some people prefer to be said Bowie. In the great tradition of the defunct Western buoys, this one is a faithful reproduction. It's a big, beautiful Western. From the brass cross guard to the brass screws, uh, you got the brass lanyard hole. This knife is just a good looking classic pattern with the perfect amount of brass. I don't know what the fuck practical uses are for knives this size, but I stopped trying to rationalize it years ago. When you realize that there is no real good reason why knives this big exist, you're gonna be a lot happier. And you won't sound like a fucking moron trying to explain. Well, actually, in a forum post or a social media comment, man, if you knew anything about self-defense, oh, I get so mad. Its carbon steel blade was surprisingly easy to touch up on the sharp maker, which must have been a good factory edge. The sheath is also pretty excellent, it's the kind I like, you know, the dangly ones. It's a shame the brass cross guard rattles after some of the pounding I put it through, but nothing's perfect, other than Lynn Thompson. Is this 11? The Frenzy. It's a pointy knife. I don't find this knife practical to carry much, but it looks cool and is fun to hold. Is it for self-defense? Ah, sure, whatever you think, bud. The handle is long and comfortable. It's not safe to close with one hand, but God damn it, I did it anyway and cut myself like a man would. Sometimes you gotta learn things a whole bunch. See my review from uh, 2017? Jesus. I've been doing this way too long. 
It was back when Cold Steel used XHP steel. 12, the Bush Ranger. This is another Mike Wallace joint. The handle's nice and comfortable, and it's a good size. And the sculpted G10 handle is a bit bulbous in the pocket, but it feels sure in the hand. I'm more of a Broken Skull or AD15 guy. Broken Skull, of course, is a lighter, thinner carry, and the AD15 is useful and fidgetable. Remember, like I said, I'm not a backlock guy. I only tolerate them on some knives like traditionals or cold steels and a few spider coes. I haven't done a review of this one yet. How about the TI light, the tie light? This is the aluminum handled one with S35VN, the six incher, the big one. It's the one of the tie light series to get. On Cold Steel's site, they have different categories on purposes of knives. Everyday carry, hunting, outdoors, tactical. Now, I guess you can't say for self-defense anymore, so tactical is a go-to term. To me, it means like everything and nothing. What I do know is a tactical is the least useful category overall. Things that aren't super pocketable, stuff you can't show your friends to at the office, knives that show up in blurry Polaroid crime scene photos, someone stole it off you, you showed some sketchy dude your cold steel collection and he broke into your garage when you were away. A knife that if someone sees you holding or playing with, it's like, oh, there's something seriously wrong with this person. Let me call the authorities. The knife is so well made though, and I paid about 35 bucks for it, which is an insane deal. And I mean that, yes, it's a deal only someone insane like me can appreciate. Uh, for example, I only paid $100 for this Iron Maiden. Isn't it marvelous? Now, there's nothing really disappointing about this knife. If you are curious and have the money to buy a knife you'll rarely ever use to cut things other than yourselves, go for it. 14, the all-terrain chopper. It's a big-ass machete. It comes with a sling. You can throw it over your back like a champ. You can split wood with it if you choose. I mean, you can use an axe or a maul, and those are always better for that but it really takes the fun out of it when you use the correct tool for the job. Plus it gives the, uh, you're using it wrong guys, a chance to get the blood pressure going. I did a review of this that featured steel reserve, so go watch it. Now, 14.5. So when I wrote and recorded the voiceover, I had forgotten I owned this at some point, so I had to go back and add this one in a half-assed way. And I, you know, wouldn't want the completists who celebrate the entire advanced knife bro cringe content to think I left it out. Like the all-terrain chopper, this kukri-shaped blade is just a machete, a sharpened piece of metal. And Cold Steel actually makes an authentic-ish one. So, uh, yeah, wouldn't buy this again. It's only about 20 bucks, though. Pro probably like 30 now. Now, one more of the decent knives before we get to the ones I didn't like. The Finn Wolf, I assume. At one point, this had a nice, decent, unblemished Scandinavian grind on it. By the time it got to me, it was beat up. Now, I haven't reviewed this knife, and I probably never will. It's cheap and functional and not too bad looking. However, I'm at a place personally in knife collecting that FRN or GFN or GFY or Grivery is whatever you call this stuff. It doesn't really do much for me anymore. It's kind of a cheap, basic material. Now, when you have held a lot of knives, like you start to form stupid opinions like this. The steel is cheap too, but not too bad. It's a good knife for a toolbox or a work knife. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, but I have much nicer or cooler knives. Sorry, I just said cooler knives. Do I understand the word anymore? Okay, let's get to the sucky ones. Some of them aren't bad, but just never anything I would buy or maybe would buy it and regret it, like the holdout. This knife has been modded as a clip point by someone in the past. Don't know why, but they may have been on the brown liquor. Did they snap off the tip prying? I don't know. It's long in the pocket. I did a video on it a while back that has a has a little Dawn of Man Space Odyssey spoof that... that I, may actually run a few minutes too long, but <laughs> boy, do we have fun around here making our knife videos. 17, now the Luzon. The Luzon, the Loser, the Luzon, Luzon. You know, if this knife did a few things better, I would probably like it more. The handle is made from an FRN or a plastic, as is the clip. You're going to have to be a little forgiving of me because it may be a different type of high impact plastic. Is the plastic thinner here? I don't know. It feels a little more hollow though than say a similar handled Finn Wolf or the Spartan. Lock stick on this one is a whole other level, almost like the backup lock doesn't even need to be there. The blade's sharp, and uh, you know, I don't know. It's one of the tactical use knives, probably. A well executed knife this size is the Tie Light, the Six Incher, or the Frenzy. It kind of feels like a toy with a recall on it, so. I wouldn't let your kids play with it. 18, the Spartan. The knife is ridiculous. Maybe it's the FRN handle. Maybe it's too much recurve, but it just doesn't work for me. I think the recurve on it, though, made me rank at 18 instead of 17, even though the Luzon feels cheaper. Pete gave me this years ago, and I guess it will stay with me probably till the end of time, until the kids throw it in the trash after I've died. It'll be a good candidate for a giveaway, I'm sure. There's a review of this somewhere on YouTube for me, and also from Pete. 
the video that I did is a gift that keeps on giving. I made some jokes about it being kukri-ish, and Cold Steel's product page and Blade HQ mentioned the word kukri in the description. Well, it's actually a Coca style. It's great though, I get it. I, it. It's much easier to tell a guy like me I'm wrong than tell him Cold Steel, because, you know, they'd kill you. Actually, the kukri is inspired by a copus. Now here are the relevant links, and I've done a lot of research on this. 19, The Voyager. Is this the medium? I don't know. I don't know if they make it anymore. It's down the list because I hate partially serrated knives, and I'm petty. I like the full serrated sometimes for crude cardboard or rope, and I do have a full serrated on my Leatherman Wave, so I'm good. The handle has fun windmill icons on it that I think I've seen on the jackets of some nice gentlemen from motorcycle clubs. This might be VG1 steel. Don't know. It doesn't say on the side. I don't fully hate this knife, but it's just ugly and plastic, and the windmills are not my thing. Oh, so I guess you're a sheep, huh? Well, for your information, it was also used during the Crusades. Doesn't help, dude. No review on YouTube, and probably won't be. The worst of the cold steels that I own is the Kudu. The Kudu? This is Cold Steel's plastic, or I mean, Zyx handled version of the classic South African Okapi style ring knife that I often still get comments about. It's not even worth talking about. For years, I've had people asking me to review this turd, seeing as how I reviewed the Okapi. This knife is about three times as hard to flick open as that one, and it feels extremely unsafe to close, and that one wasn't really easy to open or close either. You know the feeling when you're applying too much pressure to a knife and you're afraid your fingers may slip or part of the knife may break, and it feels extremely like you're just gonna lob a finger off? Well, that's what you get when you close this knife. I don't love the Okapi much, but that turd is better than this turd. It might be possible mine's a fluke, but I don't like this knife or the design enough to spend the $12 to find out if I'm wrong. And this one is a bad QC'd model. Alright, let's go through a few things and end this fucker. I also have the Gang Axe. I bought it a few years ago from Knife Center and still haven't used it. This axe is popular for throwing, and I'm sure it's awesome, and maybe one day I'll get to it, but not today, devil. Okay? I think I read it was used in The Walking Dead. It was Rick's axe for a while. Now, because this video is limited to Cold Steel's I've bought, held, and been loaned, I'll leave out your favorites. One day I would like to buy an AD-10, because everyone loves it, and a Formax 2, maybe an Ultimate Hunter. You know, it's not possible for me to buy or review all the Cold Steel's, but I really do like the ones you like. And you can like me by doing the following things. Say hi to the patrons, who in fact may be hi right now. I don't know what they do in their house, but it ain't my business. They're helping me pay off my new editing computer and camera. Wish I could quit YouTube after the miserable year 2021 has done for me here. But I literally can't stop making videos even if I want to pay these things off. It's like I'm a hostage. Buy a t-shirt or a sticker or merch from the links below the video. It directly supports me, or sometimes click the links below the video and browse. Some are affiliate links, and if you buy something, anything, you know, even the, not the thing that I'm linking, it should still help me, I guess. I think that's how those things work. Anyway, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, where I more regularly post, and also TikTok now, because fuck my life. And click the alert bell so you get notified when I make a video. Just subscribing will not put this video in your feed, unfortunately. I have found that out, and many people tell me that. I didn't know you made a video in six months. Well, why don't you check every now and then, okay? Because I have. But thanks for watching.